Today, we will solve quadratics by factoring. We will be using the factor by grouping method. This is Teeks from Algebra 2 for E. So some of the rules to solving by factoring, and I would highly suggest writing these down, is step one. We are going to set the equation equal to zero. So what that means is we're gonna get rid of all parentheses, we're gonna combine all like terms, and we're gonna put them in descending order, which means x squared, then x, and then the number. Step two, then we have to look if there is a GCF, and if there is a GCF, which is a greatest common factor, we can divide the whole equation by the greatest common factor. Step three, we can use any factoring strategies to solve the problem. So there's more than one different way to do factoring. This factoring is gonna be used factor by grouping. Um, I've also heard it called the AC method. So we will be doing factors of AC whose sum is B. Once we have our factors and we're in factored form, we are going to set each factor containing a variable equal to zero. And then we're gonna solve each factor for X. Now this is for solving. So the first rule is to make sure that you set it equal to zero. In this case, it is already set equal to zero. So again, this is to solve this equation. You know, the factors are important and um, for solving though, we can take out a GCF and it's not part of our answer. So do I have a GCF? Is there a number that goes into four, negative seven and negative two? The answer is no. So then I'm gonna go ahead and label my A, my B, and my C. And for every problem, I'm gonna make a table. And I want to know what are factors of AC, but whose sum is B. So we're gonna take A times C. So four times negative two is gonna be factors of negative eight, okay? but they have to add up to give me the B value, which in this case is a negative seven. So I'm gonna write down all the factors of positive eight, one and eight, two and four. Now, because it's a negative eight, one of the numbers has to be negative. So again, this means one of the numbers has to be negative. So how can I combine any of these two numbers together to get a negative seven? The answer is one minus eight, would give me negative seven. So I'm gonna circle the one and the negative eight, and I'm gonna put them in place of B. So your A stays the same, and I wanna bring down the two numbers we just used to do factors of AC whose sum is B. It does not matter which one you put first or second, okay? So again, it does not matter some people prefer if you have a positive to put it second, just so you don't have to factor out the negative, but you don't, does not matter which one you put first or second. So in the next ones are, we are going to group the first two numbers together, and we're gonna group the second two numbers together, and we are adding those two things together. So we are adding those two binomials together. So we make sure to add a plus sign here in the middle. If we didn't put the plus sign, that's more like we're multiplying them and we're not multiplying those two sets of parentheses. Next is to look in each set of parentheses and see what the GCF is in each parentheses. We're gonna look for what's the greatest common factor here and what's the greatest common factor here. So in this first one, my greatest common factor is gonna be X. So there's no number that goes into both, but I can factor out an X from both. So I'm gonna go ahead and write the X here. And guys, that's gonna actually come in front. Like I'm dividing it out, I'm factoring it out. So I'm gonna put the X in front, so now I have to divide. Four X squared divided by X becomes four X. And then one X divided by X becomes a plus one. The second parentheses. What can I take out? And you can either write this as two fractions or one big fraction. What can I factor out of negative 8x and negative 2? So if, if this term has a negative, I'm going to take out this negative, okay? So I'm going to factor out a negative 2 because 2 is actually 
the greatest common factor. And when I factor out the negative 2, I'm going to put it in front of the parentheses. I get 4x plus 1. Okay? So if you notice here, a very, very important fact is that my parentheses, if this is factorable, my parentheses should be the same. Therefore, I'm going to put my coefficients together. So I'm going to write two factors. One of my factors is my coefficients, x minus 2. So x minus 2. And the other factor is the common binomial. It's that one that they have in common. Now, it doesn't matter which parentheses you write first. It does not matter. So these are the factors that I'm going to use to solve it. Okay, so I'm going to take each factor and set it equal to 0. So x minus 2 equals 0, and 4x plus 1 equals 0. I'm going to add 2 to both sides. When I added 2 to both sides, I got x equals 2. On this one, I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides, and then I'm going to divide by 4. I have subtracted 1, and now to divide by 4. So my two answers, my two solutions are x equals 2 and x equals negative 1 fourth. Okay, our second example. So it's already set equal to 0, great. The next rule is to check if there's a greatest common factor. Is there a number that goes into all of these? If the answer is yes, we are going to factor out the greatest common factor. The greatest number that goes into all of these, and it can be numbers or variables, is a 2. So I'm going to factor out a 2, and I'm going to put it in front of it, but I'm going to divide everything by 2. So I get 3x squared plus 7x minus 6 equals 0. So the 2 is on the outside. It is not going to affect my answer, but it does affect my factors. So we're going to go ahead and keep it in there while we work on factoring this. So my next step is to know what A, B, and C are, and then make my table. I'm going to do factors of A, C, whose sum is B. What is A times C? So 3 times negative 6 is going to be factors of negative 18, but they have to add to B, which is 7. So I'm going to write down all my factors of 18, 1 and 18. So I always start with 1 in the number, then I check 2 and 9, 3 and 6, and there's no other numbers that multiply to 18. Now, same as the last one, because it's negative, only one of these numbers can and has to be negative. So how can I pair these together to add together, because it's sum, they have to add together to give me a positive 7. 2 minus 9 does not give me a negative 7. What about 9 minus 2 or negative 2 plus 9? Negative 2 plus 9 does give me a positive 7. So these are the two numbers I want. Now remember, those are not your answers. Those are what I'm going to split my B into. So you keep your 2 on the outside. Again, it's not going to be part of this. And we can actually put brackets around it. put the bracket around it and it's equal to zero. So remember your A stays the same and your B is now split up into negative two and positive nine. And then you bring down your negative six. So again, what we did here, the A stays the same, the C stays the same, but I split the B, that way I could do factor by grouping. And guys, don't let this too confuse you. I'm going to leave it at the end. It's just there as part of my factors, but it's not part. It's not going to do anything. I just need to leave it alone, okay? So inside my brackets, I'm going to take out my GCF from both of these. You can draw one big, one big fraction bar, or you can do two. What's the greatest common factor of 3x squared minus 2x? The answer is x. That's the only thing I could take out. I could factor out of both of them. What's the greatest common factor of 9x and negative 6? What's the greatest number that goes into both? That's a positive 3. So I'm going to factor it out and put it right there. 
So leave that two on the outside, okay? I factored out an x, I'm left with 3x minus 2. I factored out a positive 3, I'm left with 3x minus 2. Now remember the rules. My parentheses should be the same. If my parentheses are not the same, either I messed up or this is not factorable. So my parentheses should be the same. So go ahead and group that 2 is still on the outside, I can get rid of the bracket now. I'm going to group my coefficients, which is your x and your 3. And then my common binomial goes in the other one. So those are my factors. But now I have to find my solution by setting each of my factors equal to 0. Okay. So each of the factors that has a variable. So I'm going to come and take this one and this one and set them equal to 0. I have x plus 3 equals 0. Subtract 3 from both sides, and you get x equals negative 3. Okay. Then I get 3x minus 2 equals 0. I can add 2 to both sides and then divide by 3. So there I added two to both sides and then divided by three. These are my two solutions to the quadratic. Okay. For this next one, I want you to move everything to one side, put it in order, and take out GCF. So go ahead and pause this video and try doing that step on your own. Okay, so first I moved the 18 over and I had to put it in descending order and my greatest common factor was a 2, so I factored out a 2 and this is what I'm left with in parentheses. So now I want you to try to make the table to do factors of AC whose sum is B. Go find out what I need to break B up into. Go ahead and pause this video and try this on your own. Okay, the two numbers you should have come up with were 1 and negative 10, because these two numbers do multiply to give me negative 10. And if I add them together, they give me negative 9, okay? So I broke up B. Now, guys, if you, if you missed these and put these in the opposite one, your final answer will come out the same. It's okay. Just what we factor out will look a little bit different. So now the next step is to look into each parentheses and see what the GCF is. So go ahead and try to find the GCF of both parentheses and factor it out. Okay, what you should have factored out is an x and a negative 5. So then I pull them out and put them as coefficients, and now my parentheses are the same. So go ahead and I want you to group your coefficients. And the common binomial is the same. So we can actually use parentheses here. Okay. So now this is my factored form. Now to solve it, to get my solutions, is to take each factor that has a variable, which is these two, and set each one equal to zero. Go ahead and pause this video and try to set each factor equal to zero to find your solution. So you should have found your final solutions to be x equals 5 and x equals negative 1 half, okay? We have two more examples, but I really do want to give you a chance to try this completely on your own. So go ahead and pause this video, and I want you to try working out the whole problem to see if you understand how to do it. Okay, let's hope you got the right answers. So let me explain what we did here. First, we moved the 35 to this side, and we had to put it in descending order so it went at the end. The next step was to make a table with factors of A times C, but the numbers had to add up to B. So A times C, but they have to add up to B. The numbers, the only numbers, because there's only going to be one pair that'll work, is negative 7 plus 10 is a positive 3. So the negative 7 and 10 were the two numbers I put in the middle. So that's in blue. Next is what I did in black is I factored out the GCF. I was left with X and a plus 5 on the outside, and my parentheses were the same. I grouped my coefficients, and I this is my common binomial. Then I took each factor, and I set each factor equal to 0 and solved. 
Hopefully you guys got that right. If not, I would suggest rewinding the video and doing trying it again to get a little bit better at it. So I do have one more example. So I want you guys to practice on your own again, but I'm gonna go ahead and get us started. So the first step is gonna be to get put everything on one side and get rid of parentheses and combine like terms. So first I'm gonna distribute into the parentheses and I have six X squared minus two equals X. Okay, but then I have to move the X to the other side by subtracting X from both sides. So I have six X squared minus X minus two equals zero. And now it's gonna follow the same steps as all the one previously. Label them A, B, and C, and go ahead and try working out this question to see if you're doing better at understanding. Go ahead and pause this video here and try working it out. Okay, now you get to check your work to see if you understood how to factor using factor by grouping. So we did this part together. So A times C is negative 12, so they need to multiply to negative 12, but add together to give me negative one. I got three and negative four. So I put those numbers here. I took out a GCF, okay? Then because my parentheses were the same, I grouped my coefficients into one, and I put my common binomial as the other, and then I set each factor equal to zero and got x equals two-thirds and x equals negative one-half. Hopefully this video helped explain how to use factor by grouping or AC method.